How are we all doing today? Learning a lot? Yeah. Anybody in brain dead yet? No? We can take some more. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> well, today I definitely have the honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker. She goes by C.A. Lucas. I want to make sure I get that correct. Mrs. Lucas wrote her first new story. That's just an Emmanuel typewriter. <laughs> I know my parents used to have <laughs> So I kind of think I know what they look like. She worked for the newspapers in Philadelphia, Dallas, Phoenix, San Francisco, and San Antonio in 1997. Well, she was in a business editor. She was a business editor for San Antonio Express News. She went web in 1999. In 2007, she was manager for the Night News Challenge. Ms. Lucas was named to the advisory board for the Journalism Studies Department for Texas A&M San Antonio, and is a founding member of the local online news publisher association board of directors. Without further ado, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the um, online, <coughs> local online, independent online news publishers association has a fabulous acronym. It's Lion Pubs. Um, for all the little indies all over the time. It's a lot of fun. Um, let me start by telling you where Nowcast came from. Let's see if I can go forward. Yay! Okay. Uh, Nowcast was born from a, um, a challenge grant from the uh, John S. and James L. Knight Foundation. You've heard their name on public radio in the morning, you know. Uh, they used to own some of the best newspapers in the country, Philadelphia, Miami, San Jose. Um, they all won multiple Pulitzers every year, and they got run out of the newspaper business by Wall Street, and now have um, issued grants to try to invent the future of news since there is a bit of a consensus that the old model is kind of broken. So they, they put out a news challenge, and the specific news challenge that um, created Nowcast was one aimed at community foundations. So the San Antonio Area Foundation and a sister organization uh, that was known as ASIS, now known as CNOW, um, applied for that grant. And that was because the Knight Foundation felt like um, information is a core community need and that foundations sh should be the folks who are most in touch with the kinds of information needs the community has. So San Antonio Area Foundation put up some money to match the Knight Grant and um, a bulk of the money came from what was then known as FCS and is now known as CNOW. Uh, CNOW is a bunch of organizations that came together in the 90s um, to share the data in each of their silos. It was a remarkable thing. I mean, government transparency that we're getting used to now, but back in the 90s, it was a really amazing thing. And the organizations that belong to see now, it's not a formal 501c3, it's a confederation um, with the United Way as its fiscal sponsor. Those organizations include Methodist Healthcare Ministries, um, ACOG, the United Way, um, University Health Systems, all sorts of folks who have data inside their silos, and they came together to democratize the data. So when Knight came out with this challenge about information, um, who better to also team up than CNOW. So this is the CNOW website, and if you look at the top, um, on the right-hand side there, you see the three arms of CNOW. Um, if I don't stand in front of the camera. Uh, now data, now CAST SA, and now tech. In the beginnings, um, now tech uh, took advantage of the community technology centers inside like the Dolores Webster Center, the um, Benavidez Center on the west side, all of those places, and did um, bilingual um, computer training <coughs> um, with some, with some um, uh, funds that CNN <coughs> provided to the city. Uh, we still use those technology centers, and, and Nowcast actually does training in, in those technology centers whenever we can. The other arm is now data, and now data is where the origins of CNOW, where all that data is located. And if you go to now data, um, you can see um, who CNOW is, where they came from, who else did I forget? 
uh, yeah, com uh, funding comes from uh, also from Konkowski, and um, uh, I think I've mentioned most of the primary partners. I love now data because that is where you can get not just the data, but the data that puts things in context. So we did a map uh, for the second year in a row of all the back to school shots and immunizations and stuff. And we um, put that map together at Nowcast, but we also used along with that um, a, a map out of CNAIL that shows the immunization rate by, by census tract in San Antonio. And also, you can get on their interactive map through a weave system that shows you um, uh, immunization preventable diseases, and you can see it over the years. I mean, this is a this is a static shot, but if you go to see now um, and to now data, you can get that get that kind of data, and it's fabulous because it's a visualization of that data. You can cross trend it against other stuff, so it's really it's really really cool stuff. Um, as a lifelong journalist, um, I love data a whole lot because then I love putting it in context. So, so we love being partnered with them. And that is the Nowcast arm. As you can see, the featured story at the top of the homepage today is this. <laughs> and we are um, not streaming this session, but we've been streaming the, the end sessions, and then we just, because we could, streamed the um, Skype session of the woman from New York. Um, this is the second year we've done the Health Literacy Conference. We um, are actually uh, teamed up with um, the Bear County Health Assessment, and then subsequently with with um, the Health Collaborative. If you go to Nowcast, check out the About. We try to put everything um, there that you might want to know. Um, our primary mission is um, to facilitate an inclusive civic conversation, or civic engagement is our primary mission, and education. Um, and we do all sorts of, of different kinds of things, whether it's training, whether it's webcasting, whether it's doing video stories, all sorts of things, but it's all aimed at civic engagement and education. <coughs> When I first uh, came to Nowcast, all of my colleagues across the country were talking about um, citizen, so-called citizen journalism, and and it was you know um, it was like we can get a whole bunch of people to come and you know write for us for free, <laughs> which is sort of the way they looked at it. And I I, um, I kind of think that for, in order for people to come and and want to contribute to a website, you've got to have some sort of magnet, some sort of thing that makes it worth their while, some sort of value exchange, right? And um, I ran into some folks and, and university people here are familiar with this thing called photo voice. And us journalists were kind of like, what? Um, and then I realized, oh, that's the good part of like what they call citizen journalism, right? So, and, and the history of it, as, as many of you know, goes back to the 90s and, goes, and, and, and it involves basically letting people in the community tell us what the problems are, as opposed to old school media saying, you know, the New York Times has learned, you know, top down kind of. So um, I took some of those concepts of, of um, photo voice and applied them um, with help from people including Adelita Cantu, thank you, um, <laughs> applied them in San Antonio to try to get some more answers about this obesity epidemic. And that this is, is truly is going to lead to, to um, the video thing, I promise. Um, <laughs> um, so we took this data, and it's by campus, and took it around to different parts of the city and worked with, we refer to them as community journalists because I don't check people's documentation, I want to get to the facts. And we took them around and went to, um, with Dr. Uh, Kentu's uh, help, to uh, the Good Sam Center on the west side and worked with some of the modelos, the really promising <coughs> young kids, and handed this data to them and said, what's behind this? What, what's leading to this obesity epidemic? We went to the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center and worked with several women there and said, 
tell us what's behind these numbers. What's what's causing this epi- What's causing these epidemics? We went to um, the Benavide Center on the west side and worked with some young people who were just getting their GEDs and who were very anxious to to help us with this project. So it was those three groups of people, and we we turned them loose with cameras and some instructions about how not to get hurt and don't you know stand in the middle of the street with a camera stuff like that um, and said please go take pictures of what is in your neighborhood that, is, that you think is behind these numbers and This is one of the young women um, who worked with us from the Ben Media Center. And what she did was snap pictures of the causes, as far as she's concerned, behind the obesity. Hello, my name is Felicia Galindo. I live on the west side and there are many mobility obstacles to leading a healthy lifestyle. Here are a few examples. Um, There are overgrown bushes on the sidewalks. Um, There are cracked sidewalks. There are weeds that are growing that uh, are an issue for walking on the sidewalk. And there are, there's trash. just broken pieces of, um, of sidewalk that's just um, unable to walk there. I was walking my kids one day to school and I told my kids, watch out with the broken sidewalk. And well, actually, the one who ended up tripping was me instead of my kids. And my kids turned around and said, Mommy, you tripped on the broken sidewalk when you told us to be careful. So it was kind of was embarrassing. I won't walk there ever again. And then there up, the other obstacle that there is is a bunch of stray dogs that just roam around in the neighborhood, which is actually dangerous because they can go around and bite either one of the adults or, most important, the kids. Thank you for your time. So, so back in the old days when I was a you know print journalist, we might have written a story saying, "Oh, gee whiz, it's it's diet, it's it's um, you know people are being maybe lazy, it's whatever." And all of a sudden, I'm learning from people who are in the neighborhood that it's stray dogs, it's graffiti, it's broken sidewalks, it's a whole bunch of other things. And addressing that obesity epidemic is not just a question of changing people's diet. And the whole community learns from something like this. When we do a project like that, what she has to say is so much more (coughs) on point, authentic, real, and valid than necessarily what I as a journalist would have had to say. And so then the city listens to that and the city says, gee whiz, maybe we need to change the way we even uh, go about developing streets. And God bless them, the city planning department said, okay, we're gonna try to go with this complete streets concept that takes into consideration people and pedestrians and bicyclists. And so then all of a sudden from this fabulous thing where I sent her out with a camera and some instructions and some data, you have the ability to cause change for a healthier community. So it's it was pretty it was pretty exciting. <laughs> and for her too. Because somebody was saying, I give a damn about what your observations are and about your neighborhood. So it was really, really powerful. So did the city hire more people to cut down the weeds and take care of the well, yeah, I mean, there is, there has been a real concerted effort. I mean, and I think um, um, in many different um, parts of the city to try to deal with that. I think that the city manager is, is, has said in the past three years that, that um, she's recognizing that as a serious problem. Council people in, in various districts, um, from I've heard, heard them talk about it at budget sessions, and I've heard them talk about 
putting more money into that, but also putting more money into sidewalks and putting more money into streets that take into consideration that people will walk, want to walk. You know? So making it more possible to um, have a, a healthy lifestyle. But yeah, the, the dogs are part of that. And the graffiti is part of that. Right. Yeah, so I mean, and that's, I think, that, that's another possibility to take it to the next step, right? And say, okay, now, now look at what else needs to be changed. Um, um, I have to tell you that one of the one of the most fabulous things that we've done lately was to um, to live stream Wednesday um, a groundbreaking, which is not something that um, old school journalists get really excited about. You know, that's like not doesn't usually tick my clock. But um, we had a request to come out and do the groundbreaking um, in Brackenridge Park um, for the new animal adoption center. Um, um, and if you recall, that place in Breckenridge Park was where it was a crematorium for dogs and cats. It was, it's, it's on Chuleta, right across from the, right across from the zoo. And it was, a, it was a really, right, under the freeway, right, right next to the Something Gardens. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a wretched place. I mean, it was a place of death. Um, and, and all of that's been torn down and, um, Thanks to, in part, to um, grant money from uh, the Petco Foundation, from Paul Jolly, who is the head of the Petco Foundation. He gave a million dollars short it, and the city put up more money, and that's going to be an animal adoption facility. So, pardon me? It's still ACS, but it's, but it's going to be named Paul Jolly Adoption Center. Not, and, not a place of death. Um, no, we, you're no longer going to put animals down. Not there. No. <laughs> we can. I mean, and you know, I mean, they really, they really decreased. The I they, they really decreased. It. And one of the reasons that I got so excited about going to live stream is that um, Paul Jolly, who contributed the money, is terminally ill and couldn't come to the groundbreaking. And I got a phone call from the city saying, if you webcast it, then you can watch it from his home in San Diego. And so we put three cameras on it. <laughs> we webcast it first class, and um, um, there were it was it was really a moving event, and that's part of what you know. So yes, so suddenly a story about an animal adoption place becomes about the city's health. You know, <laughs> I mean it, it's all tied together. Okay, um, the. We, we do a lot of, of live streaming, obviously, a huge amount of it. And one of the, the cool things, I, I don't know, they're not in this room, but two of my, my board members um, are in the other room, um, Pilar Oates and um, Steve Blanchard at Our Lady for Lake. Both of them are a part of the Health Collaborative. Steve is the chair of it right now. And um, the, go back here, sorry, go back, back. Yes, there we go. So um, a couple years ago, Steve came to us and said, hey, could you, could you, could you do this? And I said, yeah, let's try it, let's try it. So we, he, the health assessment was on the website trying to gather information for the community health assessment of 2010. And he said, could you webcast it? And so we went to Benavides and we live streamed it from Benavides. And um, um, Pilar um, was there in the room and realized that a lot of people were having a little difficulty and so she ended up also doing a simultaneous translation to Spanish of everything that was going on in the health assessment. So it was a rather remarkable moment. It was a flat and, and and people were talking and, and um, it was a great, great interactive session. Now, at the time, I didn't feel like necessarily the webcast was going into that neighborhood, right? I mean, we know there is a big digital divide about about who can get internet service, right? So we, but on the, by the same token, what was really good about it was that we had a video archive of what had happened. So even if not too many people watched it live online, all sorts of people could come back and watch it after that. So that had a tremendous value, and that video is, is still up on the website because everything we do is, is pretty much archived. So um, later that year, the health assessment went to the east side to do some um, uh, to do the same thing, 
at the Club Black Community Center. And we webcast it. But this time, we kind of knew we could, so we told people in advance, as opposed to saying, I hope we can, <laughs> let's not overpromise. Um, so a lot of people, we, we told them in advance, and there was a lot of word that got out. And as is the case with m much of the stuff that we do, everybody wants to be there in person, but if they can't be there in person, they can watch it online. So we had so many people watching online that the online audience, when people went to tables with facilitators, the online audience said, where's our facilitator? <laughs> and that's what had to happen. We had to get somebody online to chat with them, to chat with the online audience, because they wanted their own facilitator. They were that engaged with the issue. And where, where is that at? That's at the Club Black Center. Okay, okay. So what, what you're seeing right there is the online chat with that map. They're, they're chatting online with those folks. And in the background, you see, um, that's our webcast here that you've seen next to us all day today. So, and it's the people from um, HRIA doing the, doing the facilitation with the online audience. So it's, when that stuff happens, that's like completely wonderful magic and you get, and then we can save that chat and that becomes part of the health assessment. And it becomes a whole other perspective of people who, for whatever reasons, and some of them may be um, accessibility. So think about that. Then you're adding a whole other um, dimension to the health assessment to, of people who can't get out. I'm a nurse, so I'm asking this for a nurse patient. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering about copyright issues, that, uh, permission issues. I don't even know how to ask. No, 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 no. I it's that's. It's all, it's all <coughs> serious stuff. So this is a public meeting, right? And at most public meetings, there is no expectation of privacy, and there's not a um, practitioner-patient kind of relationship going on. So I mean, that's just speaking, me also speaking as a journalist. So when I go to a city council meeting or a budget hearing or something like that, there's no expectation of privacy, and there's no, there's no contractual relationship that would involve a HIPAA thing, right? Um, but by the same token, we do make sure that people know. I mean, there's nothing ever um, sneaky about it. I mean, people know this is being webcast. And if that does make you uncomfortable, you know, then we want to take some consideration to people so that they don't feel like they're being put on the spot or something like that. Um, so the, our goal is not to embarrass people. Our goal is to expand access, you know. But, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive to that, too because obviously online we have to deal with a lot of copyright issues in other areas, but in something like this we're pretty cool. And um, it's, it's not an issue in this kind of thing, for sure. There are other issues, oh, yes? Uh, good question, I know I've seen some of your archives and I might want to use in a, a class, you know, uh, maybe a five minute segment of it, 10 minute segment of it. Awesome. Is there a way to, <laughs> and uh, just for, I, is that not that tech savvy? Is there a way just to cut a portion out of a lot of, of one of your archives? Um, it's not easy for you to do it, but it's it might be easy for us to do it, okay. or we might have already done it. Okay. Um, so yes, okay. and everything on our site. Speaking of that, is Creative Commons three. So that means that it's share, share alike, uh, with attribution, non-commercial. So it's absolutely you can. I mean, how could I ever, you know? Copyright a budget session anyway. You know, I mean, it's kind of tough. I, really, but, I think it's worth taking a minute to explain what Creative Commons. Yes, so thank you. I'm sorry. Well, Let I mean, me. I mean, I mean, you, you go ahead. I didn't mean to jump. No, in. no, 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 no. But I mean, because the question came up about copyright, right. I think that's a worthwhile. I mean, I think yeah. it's an important concept for people to get. So, um, generally speaking, on most news sites, you will see copyright so and so, and they have it all protected. Um, somebody uh, was telling me, asked me the other day, you want to use some Stephen Colbert stuff? And as a saying, it's like, nope, they're going to come and get you for that. Um, and they do. They have people out. Um, uh, the, uh, when I ran my San Antonio, um, and we have, were in partnership with Ken's Five, and they were the Spurs team, they, they were allowed to broadcast the Spurs games, but we weren't online. And they, one time we had like 10 seconds of the Spurs game because it was, a, it was right before an interview, and Spurs lawyers called us. Um, so, so the people who who are serious about copyright are really serious, and they will come and get you. Um, however, there is for web purposes. A lot of people have adopted 
different levels of creative commons so that people can share stuff without, and, and know what terms they can share it on without getting in trouble. So if you see something in, on our site that you like, the terms we have is Creative Commons 3, and there's several, several levels of Creative Commons, and ours is the third level, which says share, share alike, with attribution, non-commercial. But you can have different flavors of each of those kinds of things. And if you look at Creative Commons, the website, it gives a wonderful explanation of that and what, what you can do. We, we do that, and other, some other websites do that, because quite frankly, it's a lot less hassle. I mean, I can't pay lawyers to go track people down. And also, I couldn't copyright a budget. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not what I want to do. That's not the kind of thing that I'm into. And clearly, some people like Colbert or MSNBC and stuff are very much into that. There's one other thing that um, came up that, that I should point out, too, that's called fair use. So when somebody has copyrighted something, like, for instance, the entire Super Bowl performance, nobody else is allowed to use that. <coughs> except if something newsworthy happens, like there is a wardrobe malfunction, um, the rest of us are allowed to use like that 15 seconds of wardrobe malfunction, um, but we're not allowed to archive it. So we can use it like once for a news broadcast, but then we have to like not make it continually available on our site. So that's a whole different thing which is fair use, but it's also worth knowing that that's how we get away with using the word of malfunction, um, even though the rest of the thing is they would, they would come and get us for trying to use it. Okay, so um, that is the, the community health improvement plan that came out, and it included um, stuff that was gathered through this, um, through traditional means and also through um, our webcast, which is very cool. And we webcast that too, and will again. And um, people came on um, who couldn't be there in person and were chatting about that during the course of that as well. Um, now, I want to show you this thing because we have, um, in the side of the room, what we've got is a $10,000 TriCaster, what we've got is three $3,500 cameras, um, and um, a lot of other stuff. So, that which is pretty much beyond the capability of normal mortals, right? <laughs> so that's like up there. That's what the grant paid for. Um, there is another level, and that level is a laptop, and um, my husband uses a camera that's a $650 camera and a laptop, and streams with two cameras and, and, a, and a Mac. So that's the middle level for, um, that's very mobile and very easy to do. As a matter of fact, right now, what we're, <coughs> through, we're taking the TriCaster and pushing it through a Mac. One of the reasons we're pushing it through the Mac right now is it's a digital divide thing. The, um, we can use a program in the Mac that pushes stuff out, um, pushes the video out in HTML5. Anyone know HTML5? HTML5. It is it's new. The newest thing that will make Flash disappear. So most videos that you see on YouTube and stuff are Flash. Yeah. And, and actually our videos when they're archived are Flash. But this is streaming the video out in HTML5. And what that means is that you don't need an app. It's the anti-app. If, if you have an Android or an iPhone or a Nokia that is um, internet accessible, you can watch our live streams with no app live. So you can just tap right into them or you can watch it on um, a mobile device. So what that does for us, the, the Pew study I think that the young woman in the um, Skype session was talking about, but two years ago, Pew, Pew said, uh, guess what we've discovered? The iPhone adoption, and, or the Android adoption, mobile phone adoption, <coughs> even in households with incomes below $25,000, is just skyrocketing. <coughs> so I can go to, and I have, been to the poorest census tract in the city, Wheatley Court. And people do not have internet in their house, they have internet in their pocket. And I can stream straight into their hands. And just leapfrog that damn digital divide. <laughs> so I, I push, as often as we can, we push that stuff out. And we're doing it, our old TriCaster can't do it, but the Mac can, so we push it through the Mac and out, and get it in people's hands. I, I was just going to ask, and did some dialogue about 
that, because yes, I've seen that too with the communities that we work with. But I'm wondering too, because it's on a small, the small screen, and you know, we're used to here and reading, that may not limit, but it has to have us think about what we're going to show them here. We have to think about Right. We have to think about that. We're thinking about that more and more. And actually, part of what I, um, a friend of mine who writes a lot about this, discovered that um, for the telenovelas, they're, they're shooting with shooting cameras. And so they're shooting one for mobile, and it's a real close up that's going to fill this little screen. They're shooting for that screen completely, and they're shooting another version for. Right. And so we're doing more and more of that, too. We, we reformat stuff just for this screen or we do make sure we're doing much more close-ups so that it's better on the screen. But yeah, it's, it's a whole different, I'm videography guys back here, <laughs> like, yeah, shooting a whole different way, you know, with paying attention to how big the screen is. Okay, I'm just creatively thinking here. So wouldn't it be neat if somebody enters University Hospital, they turn on an app on their phone, and visually somebody's telling them on here how to navigate the system when they walk into the emergency room? I just thought, you know. I used to work for University Hospital yeah, for three years. Yeah, and you and still need something? That's the biggest thing when you walk into the hallways. Patients are like, how do I get here or get there? Yeah, that would be awesome. They had it, and you could have, I mean, talk about literacy, you know, you <coughs> have that low literacy or whatever. You know, I'm talking mm -hmm. to you in your language, real time. This is how you do it. You can use the GPS, you know, and to navigate. So I, I've been in University Hospital. I worked for the health science center and I can't find my way yeah. to the hospital. They what, what, something that occurs to me is you've seen the you've seen the little barcode things, right? The yeah, little sure. right so we have been we have been experimenting with them and having them go straight to video. And the first one we did with that um, was actually the, the um, bridge at Mulberry on Mulberry Street in Breckenridge Park with the toad ceramic art. Mm -hmm. And we did a little feature about the artist and um, optimized it for um, mobile and then did a did a little barcode so that you can put your smartphone up against that barcode and go straight to the video about the, the bridge <laughs> because it's like really cool. <laughs> and she's trying to have that put onto the um, plaque so that when you're at the bridge, you can like hit that thing and then see a video <laughs> about the bridge. And the potential for that, right? So we did that because it was cool and we could, but the potential for that everywhere in the city, including on the wall inside of, of University Hospital, right? of doing a little video <coughs> or a little thing that gets that gets absolutely triggered by that barcode. Yes. You know? And having it purposely meant to try to come to be very nice and calm to a person who's like lost. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely you could. Uh, be, no, be very calm. The, part of part of what I'm trying to do is say, okay, these are some of the things we've done. Not all of them are health related, but it's gonna trigger you to say this is what, what else we could do. And, and to say this is how else you could use it, or this is, you know, this is a, another application. There's an, um, I'm on Quick right now, because Quick is one of my favorite um, free um, things that you can use to stream. How many people in here have an iPhone or an Android that is connected to the web? Right. Do they, and you can see video on it, right? Um, so you can shoot video with it, too. And if you go to Quick, you can get an app that will allow you to open up your phone and um, go there and immediately do what I'm doing right now, which is streaming me live to our channel on the web. <laughs> the other thing this does, and I did this four years ago at the Democratic Convention with four journalism students. We streamed live from Denver. And if somebody's watching this on the screen here, they can type in a question on the screen, and that question shows up right here. So you have a completely interactive experience with somebody who's watching. I know it's really cool. um, I used it here for, uh, I've used it here for a couple of things. One is what you see right here. Um, Mario Salas did a, uh, a fabulous tour of the East Side that included all sorts of fun places, uh, fun things like a um, tour through the cemeteries and a stop at the grave site of Charles Bellinger, African-American saloon keeper, gambler, bootlegger, and power broker. 
Um, and Mario was giving a great, great core of things and his great description of things. And um, Andrew, the editor, was walking around with an actual real live serious camera. And I was walking around with this. And it geotagged those things automatically. So it got, so you could look at this map and see all the different places we went to and see all the different things. Now, a promotor was looking at some of this stuff and said, wow, we could like map assets for health assets, mm -hmm. mental health assets. We could do something like that. And there are all sorts of really interesting potentials with this. Um, this is the other free tool that we're using a lot. And I think this, is, this has got tremendous potential. And I don't know all the different ways, but you guys can imagine some of the different ways. Um, we're using a new crowdsource. It's called Crowdback. It is based on software called Ushahidi. And Ushahidi is, it was developed um, about four or five, maybe more years ago. If you have, if you can Wikipedia it, real quick. <laughs> it's U-S-H-I-D-I. -I. It is the Swahili word for testify. And it was created for um, crowdsourcing um, incidents of election violence in Africa. 2007. So, huh? 2007. 2007. For the Kenyan presidential election, 2007. For the Kenyan? Oh, I'm sorry. Kenyan presidential election, 2007. So, Ushahidi was developed so people could report election violence, and they could do it by SMS from dumb phones and or smartphones. So it was meant to have very, very, very low barrier to entry. And it was fabulously popular. And so now we have our version here, which is CrowdMap. And we have done two or three of them. The one you're looking at here, um, and Andrew's going to show you the mobile version. He's been standing there ready for it. Um, Andrew and I rode around the west side with um, uh, Andy Sarabia getting a tour, a Cops Metro tour of all the different things that Cops Metro did on the west side. And he took video, and I drove. <laughs> and we went to all of these different places. We went to all of those different places. <laughs> and Andrew cut up the video into 20 different pieces and put each piece of the video on that map. And so you can go to that map, and you can pull up the video of Andy talking about how in this place in town, they got bond money to stop the floods so that people didn't die. And, and you can, and the mobile version is so sweet, it's unbelievable. Uh, jump, 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 jump. So each one of those points is a story. Right. Right, so I'll pull up that map real quick. Um, so right this is pretty much the app is available on Android. It's also for iPhone and iPad. Okay. You're breaking things. <laughs> the app is downloadable for iPhone or iPad. <coughs> it's a simple thing to download. And then once you do download it, you can download, you can see all of the maps that we've done, which includes Cops Metro. And we did our backpacks, back to school backpacks and immunization shots on this map this year because it's it's so sweet on, on mobiles. Okay. Cool. So one of the cool features about this app is that it allows you to find maps that are around you. Gotta get it. Okay. And how do you spell that again? U-S-H-I-D-I. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the cool features about it is that it allows you to discover maps that are already created around you. And it uses the location um, in, your, in your device to find maps. So right here, if I click the add button, it has a find maps around me. And there's a lot of people that are using this right now. Um, so real quick, the ones that are around us are Texas Weather, uh, San Antonio Cops Metro, San Antonio Back to School Maps, uh, Eastside Thomas and Orbit Summer Activities, Wildflowers, San Antonio Bond Projects in 2012, Houston Pothole Patrol, uh, Texas School Funding Map, Share Your Story, Texas Wildflower Reports, and Texas Fire Maps. Uh, those are just some of the few that we've got um, So what it does is it gives you two views. The first view is uh, it allows you to just kind of scroll all the different locations on that map that we plotted. 
Um, so when we went around, <coughs> we were just really talking about um, how Cox Metro was involved in the history and getting libraries, community centers, uh, streets repaired. And we were just plotted all these on a map. So if you click a random one, what it does is it takes you to this screen. Sorry. Um, and on this screen, it will be involved in details. It will list the project up top. So this one was Cox Metro Almendorf Drainage Project. Uh, it's verified. Uh, the description says, former communities organized for public service. Cox President Andy Sarabia discusses activism in San Antonio during the 70s. The Almendorf Drainage Project was just a segment in a much larger coordination led by Cox leaders to get proper drainage on San Antonio's west side. The area of the city is built on a flood plain. The drainage system that is currently found on the west side was approved by city council after Cox submitted a counter budget and had multiple confrontations with public um, right under that, it'll tell you that it's a historical project. Because it's cost metro is still around, a lot of the projects are active. So you can categorize whether it was a historical project or it's an active. You can create your own categories from there. It also gives you uh, the time and date when this happened. This project was completed on Thursday, October 28, 1976. Uh, and we got that from looking at articles and doing a little bit of research. Um, they'll give you a map. So on the map, you can actually click. Uh, and it'll take you there and you can see the street view, the current view. And then right under that are documents that we pulled up from archives at UTSA Special Collections. Um, you know, it has pictures of the drainage project, a map, it has current pictures, uh, articles that were written by the San Antonio Express, the Express by the San Antonio Library. Um, I mean, it's just really information rich. And at the very bottom, if you keep scrolling down, these are all just pictures and facts. At the very bottom, there's a video that we created. And this is the segment of the interview that we had with Andy Sarabia discussing this project. Let me see if I can play that one. This is just a little bit. What happened when we were doing this, the events kind of overtook us, and we were just about finished with this thing, and then all of a sudden we hear that Cox Metro is going on brand new walks on the west side, right? And we're going, oh, wow, wait, whoa, you know, we just have this map for you. And so we called up Jorge and said, hey, guess what we have? <laughs> and you can download this app. And so he did. He downloaded his app on his iPhone. And so the next day, when they went on their walk um, with Chief McManus and the sheriffs, he uploaded photographs <coughs> from that to this very self-same map. So it's like this living, breathing, growing history book of the West Side and Cox Metro, Metro Alliance that can continue to evolve. And it can evolve just like that as, as people add their photographs. And we, we have some control over when things are added and when we approve that things are added and it, then it came in from a person who we trust and stuff. But after we say, oh yeah, we approve Jorge, then he can just add stuff as, as, it, as it happens. So if I got a rookie and I want to add something to it, I can add it to the Video that he shot 
was shot with a, with a really good camera. But it... Um, um, what, what's your device here? allows you to shoot stuff right there? This, there is, this, is by, this is by cell phone, by Jorge's cell phone, what he added to the map. So this, was a, this was a project that they did. It was a St. Timothy and San Juan neighborhood walk. Uh, it was over 60 cops metro leaders ready to walk their neighborhood in response to rising mm -hmm. crime issues. SAPD Chief McManus and Sheriff were please walking with them. It's a current project. It happened at 8.56 a.m. on Saturday, July 28, 2012 at 1515 South Hill Street, San Antonio, Texas. And, you can map. and these are the pictures that you're seeing up there that he submitted from his phone using this app. And so if you go back to this view again and you switch over to the map, this is the map. <coughs> the current project is pressure. And so it's really simple. Um, we just started this map. This is now CAT's essay, and this is where we've been. And we're trying to document all the webcasts that we've done around the city. So today, just sitting here right now, if you guys saw me taking pictures, I'm trying to um, plot what we're doing here today on the map. And it's really simple. There's a little button right here, and it's a report when you just click it. And it'll pull up the screen. And on this screen, it just lets you type in all the information, the title, the description, the category, the date and time already recorded for you as the location. And you can add photos right here. See that place right there? And it'll ask you to take a picture, and it'll pull it up to your place. And you can also, obviously, connect it to social media so you can Twitter it and stuff like right. that. Um, I, we did another one um, the other night. <laughs> it's got 300 events in it from National Night Out. Mm -hmm. God bless us. Um, <laughs> it looks like all the stars wow. in the sky. Um, <laughs> um, and um, well, I know um, I'm, I'm tickled that we now have the undying affection of the San Antonio Police Department, at least the, the folks who are involved in National Night Out, because they kind of have an idea of how big a deal this was to get this all in one spot. But a lot of neighborhood associations helped out too. And the cool thing is that they're now they're sending in photographs. So we're gonna have this thing is gonna be populated with photographs from National Night Out and stuff. And so we're kind of like building this beautiful community tapestry of, you know, what it looked like in San Antonio on National Night Out. Question. Do you have any, and I may have mentioned a little bit, but you may have said, do you have any idea who accesses your website? Oh. Are graphics? Um, so, yeah, the, the web is a really funny cr critter. On YouTube, we can tell male, female, and, and a certain amount of age demographics, right? <coughs> um, but on the actual website, we have far fewer demographics. We can tell the city that a person's from. What we can tell more of is if you, please sign up for the website, <laughs> we ask for your zip code. So we can then at least get a sense of are we serving the whole community, right? That's, that's it, what we ask for when you sign up. And, and it is sincerely because we're trying to make sure that we're serving the whole community and not just parts of it. The reason I ask you is because I just, uh, I just saw a grant that came across my email from the EPA on asthma and how to, um, if you understand environmental contaminants that contribute to asthma. And I was just wondering oh, wow. how this would look like if we could document oh, people in San Antonio where those asthma triggers are, tell a story from that, and give it to parents, to caregivers, so that you can make the connection between, between the environment and those triggers, because that that's the essence of this grant is that just that, a raising awareness that there's that connection. Here. A connection between place. Yeah, right. where yeah. you're living, where the right. traffic you're by, the school, that where, what plants you buy the school. We were just talking about the, um, the cold, the cold, the cold right. running the GPS. Right. Right. You know, and again, thinking about health literacy is a way to visually yeah. show exactly. parents. Oh, that would be that would be so cool, and and because you, I mean, you would have the geotag built into the phone, right? It would automatically pop it. So yes, you could. That would be that would be fabulous. And then it would be a matter of getting parents, caregivers, whatever, to the website. Right, right. And it, and and I think you spent how long did you spend on the phone with Jorge telling him how to do the download? <coughs> Two minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I think. I mean, it, it was since it's coming from the Ushahidi platform, it's designed to not be complicated, and and it's designed to make it easy. And you know, 
um, it's, it's a question of getting getting um, people to want to do it, having a magnet on here to say no. On National Night Out. Yeah, this well, there was only one, um, but about contaminants and um, allergies and all those things. Well, that's why it sounds like there's a lot. There, there, is, there is a lot of that, those problems, but I think that would be good with photo boards and all those things that we're doing uh, work uh, in that area. Uh, like, you know, DCD and problems with uh, bad sidewalk, there's basically no sidewalks. It's mostly fast food restaurants are going to park little things. There is no supermarket. There is nothing about there. Mm -hmm. and good, they are uh, referred to as physical activity and good nutrition. It's a good change because of all that. Mm -hmm. that but I have a question. If, if we had voice, if we had audio on that, mm -hmm. uh, would you have a real-time app that would translate between one language and the other? Mm -hmm. Sorry, if I, if I uh, recorded something in English, and I had it uh, as a presentation. Do you have an app that would be able to translate that <laughs> information? It's called an intern. This one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we have, um, we ha we have uh, on many occasions, as we as we can, we do get Spanish language audio onto the onto the website, not written Spanish, but Spanish language audio. And what we've we've done is captioned it in English. Um, actually, he's done a lot of that work. Um, he's actually not an intern anymore. Um, <laughs> but um, um, it, right now, that's that's the deal for audio, much more so than anything else. It's trying to translate it. And um, we were actually talking about that. That would be a creative program, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're casting. Right. And we were talking about adding a, um, a um, ticker at the bottom of webcast that would be translating, or adding it, you know, and many of the public hearings that we go to, there is somebody doing translation, so we were thinking about trying to get that in there as, as a separate audio feed, maybe, or something, and trying to pull that into the, to the webcast, which I think would be, I mean, if somebody's there doing it anyway, let's pull it in if we can, from a technical standpoint. Because the internet translator. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get something crazy there. Um, we, we, we did, when I was at my San Antonio, we put a whole lot of effort into um, translating the written words about the spurs into Spanish, because we figured if anything, if people would want to read anything in Spanish, they would want to read the spurs story. And we found that it was mostly men who Ginobili stands in Argentina. Who are holding. <laughs> so so I, I don't any longer go to the effort of getting um, written Spanish onto the website, because it, it strikes me as not as um, valuable to people as audio. So. Do you have any idea what the reach of your website is? It's um, yeah, we've been to six continents. So, um, <laughs> um, okay. So, so for those of you who've heard the story before, I, I, um, pause it. Um, bear with me. We soon after we were um, created, uh, we did SA twenty twenties, and we did did a bumper to bumper, and. Um, Graham Weston, who was a tri chair of SA 2020, said to me, um, Hey, would you um, come and webcast a chess match? And I said, Okay. <laughs> and it was actually it was a chess final. So it was a chess master playing 32 people at once in the Molly Cruet Library at Roosevelt High School. And um, I said, Sure, what the heck? So we did it. Um, on a Sunday before Christmas, we spent four hours um, webcasting a chess match. And um, um, he was standing in the middle of the camera, you know, going around. They were all in a circle. And we had a guy doing play-by-play, um, -play, real quiet, into a lot of air, you know, <laughs> a chess center, and saying, oh, now he's doing this, now he's doing this. It was so cool. And we told the online audience, because they're chatting, right, online. And we said, we don't know what we're doing. So if you have suggestions, please give, give them to us. So, so they were. They, they come back and hey, you want a close-up of Board 34? Um, seriously, that was one of the chats. <laughs> like, oh, okay, <laughs> we did close up. And so then um, I told, by Twitter, I told one of my friends who I've known on Twitter since 2007, um, New Media Jim, he's an NBC cameraman attached to the White House, and I said, hey, look what we got two cameras on. <laughs> and um, I had not paid attention to New Media Jim's um, following since we became friends a million years ago, but he is attached to the White House, so he goes all over the world with the president and, and has for many years. So he's followed by 46,000 people on Twitter. So when he said, hey, look what they're doing in San Antonio, <laughs> a 
whole lot of people all over the world started watching us, and we went to six continents. Antarctica was the only place we didn't get to. And I, I know they have the internet there. Um, but anyway. So, but, but what, now I used to think of those international things as not necessarily, you know, it's not San Antonio, except that um, uh, Wani, Wani, what is Wani's last name? Um, who is a, a Harlandale High School grad who was an intern for the mayor who is now at Stanford. She has been online at every single SA 2020 from either Stanford or from her year abroad in Rome or from London or from wherever she happens to be. Huh? I think 2020 was an envisioning process that took from 2010 to 2011 and where people came together to sort of produce a strategic plan for the city and they outlined 11 different areas that they wanted to focus on, including education, health, arts, neighborhoods. So the mayor's initiative. Right, there's a mayor's initiative. And, and there, is an, there is an organization <coughs> now, SA 2020, that's trying to meet those benchmarks by 2020. By the year 2020, that's what it's aimed at. Um, and that organization is now headed by Gerald Bird. Um, so. uh, just couple, one comment, uh, and I always tell the nurses, global, it's global, it's local. Right. Yeah, so we, we, the reach comes back to you, it always comes back to you. The second thing is, something is, that I know something's going on, or we're doing something in the school. Oh, yes, How please. do we contact you? Or is, is there a charm? <laughs> okay, so, um, um, thank you, thank you. We are, we are, by the way, a nonprofit organization, very much like Texas Public Radio. We're, we're sort of like public, public television on the internet. So um, we, we don't charge for stuff, um, but we do um, accept donations or investments, I look, like to call it. Um, but for news articles, we encourage people to sign up for the website and actually put it in all by yourself. If you don't have the time or inclination to put it in all by yourself, you can send it to news at Nowcast SA, and um, I think if you go to Nowcast SA, oh yes, there's also, uh, the email is .org. It doesn't matter which one you use. So um, I'm signed in right now. You see that big button on the side that says contribute news, and if you're not signed in and you hit that big button, it will tell you please sign up, and it will tell you what to do. And it's um, nowcastsa.com. So no, we don't charge. Um, we do have to look for underwriting for things, like today that our webcast is being underwritten by the Health Collaborative, because they see this incredible value in being able to open up the room. And um, um, we did get $51,000 worth of, of earned income last year from underwriting and sponsorships and stuff like that, and this year we're up to 101, and I think that's a great testament to the people in the, in the community who say, this is valuable, we want to open the room. So, but no, there is absolutely no charge to sign up. And, and sign up for the newsletters because um, um, while you're there, there's a newsletter, join newsletter, it says. Um, and then you won't miss any of the really cool stuff that we do, including, um, where are you yeah, where we're gonna be, you know? So, so even if you're not there, you know, did a town hall on pre-K for SA. Um, just, oh, that was a great one, the architecture thing. And, and also know the other thing is that you can always go back and replay the video later. So, and if you holler at us and say, I really like this video, we can find a way to get you, you know, slices of it. A lot of times, because you think of a project and you say, well, it shouldn't work. But I remember when you did the, the Nowcast, um, you know, the trial, Oh, Dan Ramos. Yeah, Dan Ramos. Uh, that, oh. was, that was all based on theory. It had to do with Robert Jules. He brought it up and uh, he made it possible. And it came out fantastic. There's, so, a, there's a picture of me hanging from the belfry at that church. <laughs> yes. Hanging clear, a clear modem from the belfry because the church had no internet service. And <laughs> we streamed. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's had 12,000 pages. Four hours and it's had 12,000 pages. Okay, he said, please finish now. Um, how do you manage bandwidth for something like that where you have so many people doing much? Because we basically we only stream, say, our board meetings. And our IT department, when I said, oh, we're going to stream our meetings, they freaked out. It's like, we well, can't handle that. It's going to crash the phones. It's going to crash everything. Don't do it. And so we have to contract with a company that handles the stream for us. It's really expensive, and we have like 12 people who watch the meetings. We're powered by Rackspace. Rackspace? Mm -hmm. So you have 
So you sent the stream up from one computer and then it was different? Well, it, it, actually, it's, it, the live stream is the company that we stream from, and they um, um, are posted at 